The three most commonly used forms of fossil fuels in the United States are coal, natural gas, and oil. They make up 81% of the country's sources of energy. Fossil fuels are used for much of our day-to-day -day activities, from heating and powering buildings to transportation to manufacturing products. Oil is commonly produced from petroleum, a naturally occurring liquid found underground. Using a process called fractional distillation, different types of fuels can be derived from petroleum or crude oil. Dating back to the Babylonian Empire, people have used oil as fuel. Petroleum was originally collected from natural leaks underground, but today it's typically drilled for and pumped up from deep below the Earth's surface. Coal is a rock-like material made of carbonized plant matter. It's mainly made up of carbon, which stores energy that is released when coal is burned. The first known use of coal as fuel was in China, over 5,000 years ago. Coal is mined out of the ground in two methods, surface or open cast mining, or underground or deep mining. Natural gas is a flammable gas made of methane and other compounds of hydrogen and carbon. It occurs naturally and is extracted from rocks such as shale using fracking. Fracking is a process that injects water, sand, and other chemicals into the ground to fracture the earth, opening fissures and releasing oil or natural gas. Fracking releases greenhouse gases and causes increases in water and air contamination. For example, the oil content of water sources near extraction sites have been known to light on fire. Overall, the cons of fossil fuels overpower the pros. They are cheap sources of energy and can be found in areas all over the world. In general, fossil fuels are not sustainable and will only lead to destruction of our planet for the future generations. An alternative to fossil fuels is biofuels. Biofuels convert living matter into energy. They are generally used as a replacement for petroleum diesel fuel. We decided to learn more about biofuels from Tad Montgomery and Tom Thanell. We visited them at their veggie to biofuel processing station in Brattleboro. Biodiesel is a diesel fuel substitute. It's generally made from crops, primarily soy in this country. Ever since the discovery of fire, wood has been used as the first biofuel. Biofuel can be made from many different materials, such as manure, ethanol, and vegetable oil. Ethanol is a very common type of liquid biofuel, and can be produced from the fermentation of various plants, such as sugarcane, to produce bioethanol. When burned, biofuels emit less greenhouse gases than regular diesel engines. However, the production of biofuel is not necessarily better than gasoline because of the environmental impacts of the United States general method of commercial farming. The state of Vermont has this plan to convert to being 90% renewable energy by 2050. How do you call biofuels renewable if they're canola oil grown with GMO crops in the Midwest and you're using fertilizers and pesticides and uh, you're polluting the rivers and the soil is degrading? And uh, Ethanol is sometimes made from sugarcane in Brazil and tropical countries. Um, but also not grown sustainably, also using large amounts of fertilizer and pesticides and things. They're cutting down rainforests to plant palm tree plantations to grow biofuel. That's not an environmentally sound solution. Well, the way that I and the different collectives and cooperatives that I've started have done it is that we harvest waste vegetable oil from restaurants. Um, the best is Duo, you know, they have high quality <laughs> stuff they fry there, so um, people say they get hungry driving behind me because uh, my car smells like french fries. Tad invited us to film on one of his trips to pick up used oil from Duo restaurant in Brattleboro. Anything we can do, whether it's grease or vegetables, we try to get out there and do it to not only for us, but community. I would say that's what do is all about. You know, the owner's really into the political, you know, the atmosphere. And as far as the restaurant, we're very local and farm to table. It's, uh, it's a relationship between the communities. Um, add biocide. So we, we settle it, we put it in barrels. Yeah. We strain it down to maybe 100 microns um, through a barrel filter. And then it settles all so winter. Like really fine. No, that's not too fine. Uh, but then we pump it through. Uh... 
probably about five years, maybe more than that, because we were located in uh, Williamsville for a while. He's taking some freshly delivered oil from West Proverb Pizza restaurant, and we're putting it through this strainer to get rid of the French fry fragments or whatever's in there, you know. That, so this is going to sit in here and it's going to settle. Once we have enough, you know, six barrels filled, we'll start filtering it. We've got this big motor here, okay, and it sucks the oil into the intake. It goes around and round and round and it goes out there where it goes into this filter here. It's basically a commercial water filter. This is what we actually filter it with. We call it a sock. And when we're finished, it goes into one of these, which is what we use to, to load our cars from. So everything in these two totes is, is filtered and ready to go. And I got an 85 Mercedes that I just poured it in the tank and it runs beautifully. It's ecologically sound and it saves us money. Well, you do get CO2 out of it. And there are probably a few other very minor ingredients, but not like all of the stuff you get from petrodiesel. The EPA did a really comprehensive study on biofuels a few years back, and they determined that a combustion engine running on waste vegetable oil is basically climate neutral. That it's taking a waste product and using that, whereas the waste product is going to go somewhere either into cow animal feed or into a landfill, and it's going to biodegrade. Um, and maybe be worse than what we're doing with it for the environment. Biodiesel made from the same product is about 85% climate neutral. Human powered transportation or electric transportation is still far and away better environmentally than even the best biofuel. We need a cultural shift in our country. We started to see bicyclists or even pedestrians, people who deliberately walk instead of driving, as sort of our heroes, um, and made that shift and started living in ways where we could bicycle and walk places. It would do a tremendous amount for like no cost whatsoever. And health benefits. I bicycled here today, <clears throat> um, and it's single digit weather. Uh, and I did that very deliberately because like I say, I get 500 to 1,000 miles per gallon. Me on my bicycle, I'm getting like probably 10,000 miles to the gallon. It's just the food that I'm eating that's powering me. The first electric powered motor was invented in 1834 by Thomas Davenport. Hybrid and electric vehicles, also called EVs, have continued to develop drastically over the last century. Hybrid electric vehicles are powered by two kinds of engines one that can run on a conventional fuel, such as gasoline or biofuel, and an electric motor that uses energy stored in a battery. A bigger battery allows the vehicle to run longer on electricity. Full electric vehicles run on electricity alone. They run on one or more rechargeable battery packs that fuel an electric motor. Full electric cars can be recharged using public infrastructure or plugged in at your own house. I would recommend a Prius over an irregular gasoline car because you get twice as much gas mileage. I can go all the way to Boston and back on eight gallons of gas. It shows you how much money is on the dashboard. If you put in like two dollars to a gallon and how many miles you went. I, I get home and I have like 16 cents listed on my dashboard. I can get 50 miles to the gallon because of its technology being able to cycle energy out of the engine and put it into a battery and store it and I can pull it out of the battery again um, and use it instead of gas. So it's ultimately a better car because of that. Driving an electric vehicle can be worrisome for people who don't live or commute near many charging stations. Range anxiety refers to the insecurity of an EV that can potentially run out of electricity before its driver's destination is reached. It takes four to eight hours to fully recharge a car, and with an at-home charging facility, this can be conveniently done overnight. Battery packs need to be replaced occasionally, 
but the money that is saved when batteries are used in a car instead of conventional fuel is worth their expense. You know, often uh, choice of cars is thought about in terms of profitability, like how much money am I going to spend on gas? Is gas cheaper than diesel? Is, is a Prius cheaper than gas? But the metric I like to use is if I'm traveling more efficiently in a car, then I'm emitting less CO2 in the air. And that's a different equation because right now we can't afford to have CO2 in the air. So have that be a different way of evaluating what kind of car to get, what kind of fuel to use. Because you can see for the same amount of mileage for each of these cars, your CO2 levels will be different for each one. And then you can directly say, what am I leaving for the future generations?